Right, good afternoon guys. I just thought I would um, talk about the RX-10 Mark IV because I really, really, really contemplated the other day of actually selling it. Um, the A6700 has got a lot of press recently. It's a fantastic bit of kit. Obviously it's brand new. Um, I'm filming on it now because I've got the screen there, the flip out screen, everything makes it very easy for me to do. I've got my microphone on, so the sound should sound pretty good, hopefully. The, the way um, that camera works is, is very good. It's obviously small, bigger battery and all that sort of stuff, and it's quite quick. But the RX-10, which I really, really contem contemplated selling the other day, and that's what this video is about, is kind of old now, isn't it? Six years old. So next month, actually, it came out six years ago and I was very lucky to get quite an early one. And that's how the YouTube channel started, you know, and it's kind of, well, I had a couple of bits on there, but this is where it sort of suddenly people got interested and, you know, thanks so much for everybody who, who watched it and has bought one and, you know, enjoyed the photography that this thing's done. So it's a bit of an iconic camera now, getting that way. It, still people are buying them left, right and centre. It's still fantastic. It's still an absolute beast for what you can do with it. It's awesome, and the reason I thought about selling it the other day was I haven't used it. I, I've been picking up the A6700, you know, the 200 or 600 or other lenses and stuff like that, and just wandering around and snapping away with it, because obviously it's a new new tool. So, you know, getting um, that out of the way now, it's almost like a bit of a honeymoon period, isn't it? You know, uh, I picked this up the other day and went for a walk. You'll see in the video where I went, and I was talking about stuff as I was wandering around. And just had a walk so within 20 minutes of me walking around this and i took only only the rx10 i realized that actually don't sell it because it's that good you know one obviously the range of the lens that we know so well 24 to 600 uh the speed of the autofocus is still very very quick and even up to today's stuff yeah it's not as intelligent but it's still going to hit the target you've got the benefits of a smaller sensor so the smaller sensor gives you a little bit more natural depth so even at f4 you know, at 600 mil, you're still going to get most of your subject, uh, at least the head anyway, in, in focus. Um, it does produce quite nice bokeh as well. And obviously at 24 millimeters, we've got f2.4, so we can get some nice shallow depth field, even wide angle, like when you're close to a subject. The size of it, obviously, one kilo, and it does everything. You know, uh, it is what it is, you know, and it, it works so so well. We know nothing's perfect, and this is not perfect. The A6700 is not perfect. Even the A1 isn't miles away from perfect, you know. So, you know, as a photographer, you use your tools to your best means, and you know sometimes you have to change the techniques to make things work, which is absolutely fine. Um, the image quality that comes out of this little one-inch sensor with this lens is blows your mind sometimes. You know, some of the shots I've taken. In fact, probably my most favourite shots I've ever taken other than in, with my film cameras back in the old days, are with this. So the fish jumping out of water, I wouldn't have got the shot if I didn't have this with me. I would have been on a wide angled lens and would have missed the opportunity. The, um, the Spitfire blasting down the runway, low, low level. Um, yeah, I probably could, would have got it with other, another camera, but at the end of the day, I was still there shooting at 600 mil, 24 frames a second, just blitzing this thing down, coming down the runway. Uh, there's loads of other shots I've taken as well, which you know, absolutely love. And, you know, this really does kick ass. Uh, obviously low light is not brilliant. The autofocus in low light is not brilliant, um, but we've got noise reduction software now that changes the game really with this thing. You can shoot ISO 6400, no, no trauma whatsoever. And, you know, it's a bit of noise reduction and it looks clean. So, you know, that's taken away my, the worries really of a small sensor and high ISOs nowadays. Uh, the flip out screen is obviously not perfect. The biggest drawback of this camera, which I obviously stuck a, and lots of people have asked me, stuck the little rubber eye cup on there, but apparently you can stick a normal one straight over if you take that one off, um, is that hard rubber eyepiece was never comfortable. It's not very nice to use. The EVF could do with being a little bit bigger, but other than that, it's very nice to use and it's still a pleasure. You know, so wandering around for the day with it, a couple of batteries in your pocket, or for a weekend or even a week away, you could just take this camera and get some amazing shots with it. And, you know, unless you're using it for work purposes, 
obviously where I'm using the A1 or the A6700 as my backup really, or my sort of vlogging camera as such. Um, it's, yeah, still absolutely incredible. Um, the way it works in the hand is really, really nice. Uh, in fact, I think the grip's a bit too chunky, it's a little bit too big. But yeah, it, it does everything you need it to do really in the real world. Uh, obviously a few things need dialing in you know, as a replacement one day. Um, but everything's moved on a little bit, you know. With this camera here, the A6700, I'm actually using the framing, auto framing guide. So when I walk around, the camera's not moving, it's, it's stable. It's, it's on a tripod, so it will actually follow me around. So it's cropping in as I come in closer. It will follow me around, so wherever I move my head. So that's a really nice feature. And I think for me, someone who works alone quite a bit, you know, I'm out and about, I can use this auto framing guide and I've got it on my FN button. You know, the little FN button on there, which all the Sonys have got, which is great because it brings up a little menu down here and you can pick up to 20 things depending on what you're doing. So you've got 10 or 12, is it 12? 10 or 12. Um, yeah, 12, 12 on each one. So you've got 12 on uh, photos and 12 on video. You can set up your camera as much as you like. You hardly ever have to go in the menus and that's on all the Sonys now. But yeah, fantastic. Um, fantastic bit of kit, even at six years old. It just shows you when Sony released it, how far ahead of the game it really was. You know, the stack sensor is just mega. Um, super fast readout, don't get any rolling shutter. Um, it's just a really, really strong bit of kit, really. Um, leaf shutter, if it ever decides it's gonna need it. Most of the time I have it in burst mode and it's just using the electronic shutter. Um, same with my A1. I, I rarely use the, um, the mechanical shutter ever, um, even for flash. So yeah, huge, huge difference in the way you can utilize a camera nowadays. So there's no real wear and tear other than the electronic lens. Um, obviously the only downside is it's electronic zoom. So where you're used to with the, you know, the A6700 or the, the A1 or anything else, like the A7R5 or whatever, you know, you put in the bigger lenses on which have got manual zoom. So you're literally obviously moving the lens backwards and forwards. Obviously this where you can use a lever or the lens, but it's all electronic. So that's only one downside because it's quite slow. And its biggest drawback I find is you can't zoom in or out and focus at the same time. So you have to use the speed of the focus, back out or zoom in, then recompose your shot and focus and then take a shot. So it's not perfect by any means, but everyday use, this thing kicks ass. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. If you've already got one, you'll know what I'm talking about. The images that come out of it have been fantastic. I've gone up to A1, no trouble whatsoever. Uh, size wise and it just works really really well um, I'm going to leave you to it guys um, let me know what you think in the comments below and also um, yeah don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell as well here are some of the pictures I took out I didn't take that many in the end I mean it was just pheasants jumping out and scaring the crap out of me most of the time out of the bushes uh, and a few buzzards and some of the landscapes and things like that around the area so um, just had a wander around and uh, just enjoyed the weather really and and a little bit of exercise so I shall catch you later. See you soon. A couple of pheasants, one went through the fence and two pairs basically. The pheasants just keep walking around. It wasn't windy 10 minutes ago, it was literally calm as you like. <laughs> so typical. As soon as I want to go and record stuff, in fact if I'd block the mic there it might make a huge difference. On the sound, the pheasants are in the hedgerow there um, but suddenly as you can hear the wind has gone up oh there's loads of pheasants <laughs> watch them run 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 Dragonfly, a couple of dragonflies actually. The light's not brilliant. Got the old water water wheel down there, and the old sawmill, including the old saw machine, or sawmill machine itself. 
definitely a bullet or something. There we go. Even with the blade and everything still in there. Hard to see why it's all overgrown, but it should be good in the winter once it's um, all died back. Might be able to do some photo shoots in there. Nice backgrounds and everything. Just got to be very careful, some big holes and things in places. But kind of cool. Where is that buzzard? He's right up there. One of them. There's more though. When you're walking along, minding your own business, and I didn't record this, so it would have been quite funny for you guys <laughs> if I'd been uh, recording like this as it happened. Pheasants, sort of hide hide in this sort of area here. It's sheltered out the way from them. They can, you know, they've got protection, and no one really knows they're there. And um, blackberries are looking good. Um, walking along, there goes one then. They're everywhere at the minute. Uh, walking along, and one just came out of there. Sm tail smashed me in the, the, yeah, the tail and wing smashed me in the face as it went <laughs> that way. I was like, oh, okay, thank you, thank you so much. There's one here somewhere. Oh, yeah, there's a couple down the other end by the hay bales. Can hear it in there. Anyway, wandering up. There's one there. Little two. Three. Bloody hell, loads. Oh, I've just got had five vertical launches, there's one here. Could probably go. It's freaked out because the fence is there. We can walk up. Camouflage is amazing there. You can't see them until, well, until they move. If they stay still, you would never see them. There we go. Better view from here. Stand back a bit and uh, walk back down the hill slightly, and I'll get a bit of a more sky and a little bit of temple and less trees and stuff. In fact, if I duck down, it would be even better. We shall see. I'll take a shot now. So this shot here was just a really simple black and white conversion and um, just ups the contrast a little bit. It looked really cool. Um, I really quite like it. So it's a bit of a dog fight going on up here. Crows versus buzzards. They're everywhere. <laughs> oh, another one. Oh, another one, another one, another one, another one. Those of them. And some more. See you later. Check it out. And another one. Any more over here? So once the buzzard uh, got rid of the crows that were chasing it, he was just cruising around. And it turns out there was another two of them as well. Could hear them uh, make some noise further in the distance, which is uh, quite cool. Anyway, got a little bit lost and it's just pheasants everywhere. They just freak out every time you go anywhere near them. They just... <laughs> a bunch of idiots. Um, well, I think I've made it to the footpath now, I've got a bit lost. So I, th I don't know if I go across the field there or into this field and then somewhere else. I'm not really sure. Um, the problem is lack of signage around here. Find out which way to go. I'm not sure. If it's into this.
this field. Right there, not sure. Found a little bit path through the woods. And then more pheasants everywhere, hundreds of bloody things. Don't even taste nice. They're literally everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. You alright, Chirpies? There's your whole line of them walking up the footpath. Freaking out just because I'm walking through it. That's funny. Anyway, no idea how to change the map. Anyway, we are on the route apparently. There's no style though. So, oh, there it is. Here we go. It's labelled on the on the gate here, but there's no style. I'll just open the gate. Um, but we see all the time sheep escaping and stuff like that and um, just make sure you shut the gates if you come out of the city or whatever like that or you're you know not from the countryside at all and you you know live in towns or whatever and you come out to the countryside and you're not used to it just make sure you shut the gates behind you because those don't want to be in here or on a road or or somewhere like that so just uh, make sure oh a cool tree there there's a dead tree randomly there Probably birds of prey sit on it, I suspect. Um, but more pheasants in the field with the sheeps. Obviously proof that I've closed the gate behind me. Anyway, let's wander across a field of sheep. Looks like a little holiday let here. It's quite cool. This old tree is awesome though. It'd be really cool for star shots and stuff. And it's right on the footpath. So. Oh, cool. Anyway. Keep wandering whilst trying not to tread in sheep poo. And uh, where do I need to go now with this? I'm guessing to that gate over there, unless there is another style. I'm quite sure. Uh, oh, maybe that gate there. Hello, sheeps. Why have you got no ears? Like an earless sheep. Literally. Have you ever seen a sheep with no ears? He has no ears. No weird. Anyway, unlike that sheep, he's got big ears. Sheep shit. Sheep pissing. Hmm. What a cool little place there, look. Zoom in on it. What was that? I can hear a spitfire. Hello, mate. Me. You look really excited. I'm very interested. That was a style, that's good. Hello, sheep. Yeah, what a lovely walk out. I mean, it's the wind's calmed down. I think it's just because I'm lower down in the countryside, but uh, yeah. So I'm shooting in HD today. So if you shoot with the RX10 Mark IV, you can actually um, have intelligent active stabilization, which I think is one of the most, it was the first Sony camera to have it, I think. It's obviously now in the A1, A7R5, the A6700. A7R4, uh, A74, sorry. A few of the other ca uh, cameras as well. So it's very handy. It does give you a more stable video, especially when I walk not particularly smoothly. All right, let's jump over this style. And get attacked by two dogs. Oh, 
he says as he gets his foot stuck. I'm off. <laughs> That's not the easiest style in the world. Could have just opened the gate, I guess. Uh, and then down here. Nice. There's going to be more pheasants taken off in a second. They're all in there. <laughs> See ya. Crazy animals. More in here as well. Hundreds everywhere. Sugar loaf. The tower. They're like road runners. Beep beep. And another one. I reckon there'll be loads around the corner. Hello. See, they're not too scared. So, with some of the photos here, this is one of our hay bales in the meadow. And while I was just down there recording the uh, footage for the opening scene. Uh, I just took a few shots with the RX-10 and you know it's quite a moody day that day, sunny but hot and nice. Um, some horses in the field not too far away, uh, one being a little bit nosy heading over my way but I thought the colours were quite nice, nothing brilliant but just a few snaps really. Uh, shooting a manual and um, ISO 100 and just adjusting the shutter speed up and down f4 to 5.6 this shot here, f4, um, at about 400 millimeters. Uh, can't remember what the shot speed is, but as you can see, a nice and sharp. Uh, this is 24 millimeters, quite close to it in f2. Point f no, actually, that's a lie. F5.6. I remember because I stopped it down just to get a bit more depth. But as you can see, they're nice and uh, in uh, I can't speak. Nice and detailed on the uh, dandelion there. Um, those were the pheasants making a run for it when I was walking down the field. Uh, heading down towards the lake anyway and uh, I'd about a four, I'd say four, four to five mile walk I went on and um, it was quite nice and one of the pheasants had taken off nothing brilliant but I was just basically trying to stay with it and just a little bit of practice really just to try and stay with the uh, the subject when they just do erratic maneuvers and pheasants are generally skittish as anything so it's interesting to uh, see quite like this one this is like the I say a cattle path or the sheep um, path where they walk every day um, and uh, just thought the background was quite nice and the rolling hill and the green grass and everything just looked quite pleasant as well so that was quite cool um, the lake I walked down to uh, got right down on the water's edge and put the camera as low as I could go without getting wet and uh, took a shot there it looked quite nice f5.6 wide angle 24 mil uh, pheasant, not particularly sharp. It looks not so bad there, but actually when you crop in, it's it's not brilliant. Um, but I was shooting through a bit of foliage, and it was a bit of a panic shot, so it was a case of uh, take the shot before they legged it right into the bushes. Uh, walking towards this old oak tree here, and um, I just took two shots. One from this side, in walking into the sun, and the sun is literally just out of shot, just above, uh, causing a little bit of a silhouette. But you can see a little bit of colour there, but you can also see a bit of colour cast coming down from the uh, the sun uh this shot here not as picturesque because i couldn't separate the tree from the background sadly um but obviously the lighting is much nicer this side so yeah it's just a case of thinking about your shots uh the forest up in the hills there um and obviously quite a cool big cloud there as well just added a, added quite a nice looking scene to be fair i just thought it was quite nice and the colors and everything can't wait until it all starts going golden and, and whatever into autumn. Uh, one of the crows um, attacking, well, trying to attack one of the uh, buzzards there, and there was a huge, loads of them, loads of crows attacking them, um, getting pissed off by them as well. So that was uh, interesting. So 604, uh, 600 mil F4. Uh, buzzard at a different angle, still getting chased by another crow. Uh, the crow looked so massive in that other previous shot because it was a lot lower than the, um, the buzzard. The buzzard soared up a little bit. And as you can see there, the size difference in reality is, is quite a bit different. Right, so these pheasants, um, as I was walking down the sort of gravelly, well, chip, chipping path, um, this pheasant was coming straight at me 
And by the time I turned the camera on, obviously, and zoomed in to sort of 600 and started trying to track it, it was almost past me. So that shot there is not too bad. Uh, just a shame about the fence in the background. But other than that, it's quite a nice, quite a nice light. And um, yeah, so um, other than the sort of temple picture further back, it was kind of all the shots I took. I mean, other than the burst shots of um, the pheasants and stuff, and obviously you just pick out the best ones, don't you? The ones you actually look quite good. Some have got their eyes shut, some have got their wings flapped down, some are arse in your face kind of thing and you know it's not brilliant so it's just a case of picking those pictures that you think look better um, because most of the pictures are in focus they're sharp um, unless it's a panic situation like this where you're trying to get the camera turned on and trying to get your shutter speeds correct just to try and uh, get that action shot uh, and most of them are just yeah as, a, as what they are and then you know some of the wide angled shots I'm sort of moving around and trying to get a better angle of, of like the temple and and stuff like that so yeah it's just a bit of fun nice little walk as well i actually ended up walking a lot further than i thought i was going to and yeah it was a nice day so anyway don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well and there'll be more videos coming very soon now i've got back into it i shall uh be uh uploading some more um a6700 definitely and the rx10 as well um and even the a1 and yeah we've got the uh the studio stuff running as well now so you should start seeing some of the studio stuff especially as we go into autumn where it's a bit colder or rainy and we don't want to necessarily be outside so there's going to be some interesting stuff going on there so that'd be good um but anyway i shall see you soon guys thanks for watching and um, please share the channel and follow me on instagram if you can and i shall see you soon